Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the two nights problem from the CSES problem set. All right, so this is a very interesting question and I'm going to try to show you my thought process of solving this and how to do it step by step. Okay, so in this question, our task is to count for k is equal to 1 all the way to n, the number of ways two nights can be placed on a k by k chessboard so that they can, so that they do not attack each other. Okay, so as an input, we're going to be given the integer n. And in this case, so let's say if n is 3, first we would have the number 1. And in that case, we would have a 1 by 1 board. Then we go to the number 2, and we have a 2 by 2 board. Then we go to the number 3, and we have a 3 by 3 board. And that's it. We just go up to the number n. Okay, so we've got to print n integers, which are the results as our output. Okay, so this is one example with the number 8. And when we have a 1 by 1 board, there are 0 possibilities. When we have a 2 by 2 board, there are 6 possibilities. So now let's actually see what this looks like and how we can actually solve this question. Okay, so before we start, uh, real quickly, I want to show you how a knight moves. Okay, so in the game of chess, real quickly, so this is, let's say this is a knight piece. The way it moves is in a L shape, okay? So we could go one to the right and two above. Or we could move two to the right and one down, okay? So however you do it, it's in an L shape. So the same way, you can go to one to the left and one above, and same way, one to the left and one down. So this would also come like that. And you can also go two to the left and one down and two to the left and one up. So these are all the possible ways a knight could move, okay? So given this, let's actually see an example. So the best would be a three by three chess board. Okay, so we have the three by three board here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place one knight over here and another knight over here. Now this over here is not a possible solution to our question, right? Because this attack, these knights do attack each other. So this over here moves in this L shape, and this could move in this L shape and attack each other. So this over here is a bad thing. So this is one of the possibilities that does not count, okay? But now another thing that would count is when the two knights are over here, right? So no matter how you try to attack, these two knights do not attack each other. So this is a valid position. So we would count this, but we would not count the previous one. So now given this, how exactly do we solve the question? Now, the first thing to actually do is we want to first consider all of the possibilities of placing two knights, okay? And in that, there's one thing that we do need to make sure. So in this question, we could have knight one, which is a circle, and knight two, which is a, a x over here, to be in this order. Now, another thing we could have is we could have the same x over here and the o over here. So when you do this, right, when the order changes, we call it a permutation. But in this case, we do not care about order, okay? So we do not care about the order. So in that case, we would be looking at the combinations, okay? So that's what you do. So when you don't care about order, you look at the combinations. So essentially what we want to do now is we want to look at all of the possible combinations in this 3x3 three three grid, right, for us to place two knights. And from all the combinations, we're going to subtract some number. And this number over here, is going to be the possibilities which do not actually occur, right? So the possibilities where the knight attack. And the reason this happens is because the possible uh, places where the knights do attack each other is going to be less than all the possible combinations. Okay, so let's take it step by step and let's first actually find all the possible combinations given a n by n grid. So since we know it's a combination, there's a simple formula to this, okay? And this is called ncr okay so this is when we're using combinations and in simple words the way you would say this is n chooses r okay so you have n possibilities and you have to choose two things from that to place it there so in this case how many possible places do we have we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and in simple words just to get that we know this is a three by three so the number of possibilities is just going to be equal to nine so now let's generalize it so we would have a n by n possibilities, which is nothing else but n squared. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to write x is equal to n squared, okay? We'll change it up later, sorry. So x is equal to n squared over here. So now, in this case, we have x possibilities, okay? x possibilities. And from that, we have to choose two possible values. So given this formula, x c2, we're going to get all of the possibilities, okay? And the actual way you do this is you get x factorial, and you divide it by uh, 2 factorial multiplied by x minus 2 factorial. 
All right, so we can actually simplify this. So you could expand the x factorial and write it as x minus one into x minus two factorial. And in this case, the x minus two factorials both cancel out. And this actually leaves us with x into x minus one divided by two factorial, which is called nothing else but the number two. And when you expand this furthermore, you're just gonna get x squared minus x by two, okay? So this is actually what we're, is the answer for when we have a board with n by n value. So let's actually just see this. So, and just to, for the sake of replacing it, x is equal to n squared. So this would be n to the power of four minus n squared divided by two. So let's just see this formula in an example real quickly. So let's say we have a two by two board. So given this two by two board, let's actually just apply it in our formula. So this would be two to the power of four minus two squared divided by two. So to the power of four is 16. Then we're gonna subtract it by four divided by two. And that's just going to be 12 divided by two, which is equal to six. So six is all the possible combinations of placing the two knights in a two by two board. So we can actually look at that real quickly. So we'd have one here, so two here. So when, I, when I'm showing that, I'm saying one over here, one over here, one over here, one over here, so that's two. Then one like this, one like this, so that's two more. And then we have one like this, and then we have one like this. So that's a total of two plus two plus two, which is six, right? So one, two, three, four, and five, six. So we have six possibilities. And in this case, no matter what you do, remember, the knight is not going to attack each other because the knight moves one step and two down or two to the right and one down. So it's never going to attack each other in this place. So this is one exception where our answer would be six. But now going back to our three by three grid, right? In that case, there are places where the knight could attack each other. And this was one of the examples. So when X was zero and when the other marker was zero, uh, then in that case, they do attack each other. So we do need to consider that. Now, the way we're actually gonna do that is exactly how I showed you earlier. Remember, it's always going to move, a knight is always gonna move in a L fashion, okay? So we can actually simplify this even more and kind of divide the question into smaller part, okay? So over here, we could move one to the right and two up, sorry. So we could one, right, one to the right and two up, right? So in this case, essentially, we can actually just form a simple box. So what would the dimensions of this box be? So this would actually be a two by three, okay? So this would be two and this would be three. So what exactly we wanna do with this two by three is in the two by three itself, we want to see given a two by three, how many combinations are there where two knights attack each other. So in this case, let's say I put one knight over here and one knight over here. So this has one way to attack and this knight also attacks it, right? So this is one combination which does not work. So in the two by three, we have one combination that does not work. Now, is there anything else? And there is. We could have one over here. So, so I'll just represent it with the uh, letter K1. So, and we could have another knight over here. So in this case, when we have a uh, one knight here and one knight over here, that is also not a valid move since they can attack each other like this. So essentially what we're saying by this is given a two by three, there are two combinations which do not exist, okay? So essentially, we can just check how many two by threes exist in our n by n grid, right? So check how many two by threes exist in this, and depending on that, we can subtract that many combinations from that, since we know that each two by three makes that, okay, means that there are two moves that are not possible. So we can actually extend this uh, to another condition, which is we know that it could move right uh, to the right one and up two. Same way, it could move to the right two and up one. So in this case, our box is a three by two box. Okay, I know the dimensions are not the same, but just imagine they are, okay? So this is a three by two box. And in this condition, there are also two places where let's say there's a knight over here and one over here, they would attack each other. So this is another place where it is not a possible combination. Now the same way we can have one knight over here and one knight over here, and these two also attack each other. So now given a three by two box, there are two combinations in here which, do, which are not valid as per the question. So we need to check how many two by three boxes are there and how many three by two boxes are there in a n by n grid and subtract 
the number of combinations from there that do not exist. And it's two for each of these, okay? So real quickly, how do we know the number of two by three and three by two boxes? So that's pretty simple. Okay, so let's say we have this four by four grid here, and let's see how many two by three boxes exist in this, okay? So we have one over here, so there's one two by three box, and we have another over here, right? And this would be another one, okay? So essentially each time we move it to the right by one. So how many can we fit horizontally? So that's actually pretty simple. The number of boxes we can fit horizontally in this case is three. And to generalize it is just going to be n minus one. And the logic is very simple. So over here we have two boxes, then two more. Each time we slide it to the right by one. Then we have two more here. And if we want to start a box from the very ending, it's going to go out of bounds. So it's not valid. So we're going to have n minus one boxes horizontally. Now we've got to see vertically. So now we have these. So now we move it down by one. So when you move it down by one, we have something like this. We have another box, which is like this, sorry. And we have another, which is like this. Okay, hopefully it is clear, okay? So these, so when you move everything down, we have three more boxes. So in this case, how many do we have vertically? So vertically, it is going to be n minus two boxes, okay? So because we have three over here, then we move it down by one and we have three from here. And now if you move it down again, we're going to go out of bounds. So in general, over here, we have two boxes, but in general, that's gonna be n minus two. So in this case, the number of boxes, uh, number of two by threes we have is going to be n minus one into n minus two. Cool, so now let's do the same thing, but for how many uh, three by twos do we have? Okay, so the three by twos is actually just gonna be the same thing, but the reverse. So real quickly, so we have a length of three and we have a height of two, okay? Uh, so we do that again and over here now we have two boxes, right? So we have a length of four, but we could only fit two boxes. So in this case, that would be n minus two. The logic is the same. We fit three, then we fit three more, and then anything after that is out of bounds. Now, same way for vertically, we fit two, then we move it down one so we can fit two more. Then we move it down one again, we fit two more. And let's move it down one again. Now we're out of bounds. So in this case, that would be n minus one, um, height wise, right? So vertically it's n minus one. So for a three by two, this is just gonna be n minus two into n minus one boxes, okay? So now we know the number of uh, two, uh, the number of two by threes that exist and the number of three by twos that exist. So realistically to get the total number of this, we need to add these two up. And when you add it up, you can essentially just get it as this. So two into n minus two into n minus one, right? So this is a total number of two by threes and three by twos that we have. But now we know that in each one of these boxes, so in each three by two and in each two by three, there are two combinations which are not valid. So in this case, we're gonna multiply all of this by two, and this is going to be all the combinations that are not valid. So this is the formula that we're gonna use. So now we merge the two formulas that we came up with. So we had the NC2 formula, and we're gonna subtract it. So this is all of the possibilities, and now we're gonna subtract this with all of the possibilities, which are, sorry, combinations, which are not valid. And this is going to give us all the valid combinations. All right, so just a small thing I do wanna add. So this is the formula that we did come up with, and just to, uh, just to simplify it, we could actually just make this N squared into N squared minus one. So it's the same thing divided by two, okay? So we're just gonna use this instead for the code. Okay, now let's see what the code looks like. All right, so the first thing we do is we take uh, n as a input, and we're gonna iterate through this starting with the number one. Now the first thing we do is we find the total combinations. So this is the same formula, which is the n squared multiplied by n squared minus one, and then we divide all of that by two. So we get the total combinations. Now we wanna find the combinations where the knights do attack. So it's four into i minus one into i minus two. So the reason it's that, so it's two into i minus one into i minus two for the total number of rectangles. And in each of the rectangles, there are two additional possibilities where the knights could attack. So that's why we multiply all of that by two, giving us four into i minus one into i minus two. So finally, we print out our output as a total combination minus the attacking knights. So in this case, let's just run our program. So so let's just run our program real quickly. So two knights, and let's say we give it a value of eight. 
So this is what we get 0, 6, 28, 96, 252, 550, 1056, and 1848. And that is exactly what is our expected as well. So hopefully you did understand the solution. And uh, this solution of mine was accepted. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. And do let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.